ARM V9. Uh, new instruction sets uh, happen uh, once every five to 10 years or, or updates to them. And ARM da, 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 brought out their ninth version. And actually, it's not actually the ninth. There, is, there were derivatives of eight, but uh, we'll call it nine because they called it nine. Yeah, well, we're branding. I mean, we're just we're just doing the branding thing here, Pat. But yeah, I, uh, you know, the way this thing is is reading out and the way the story is being told, ARM is rolling out what's essentially its biggest overhaul of its technology in a decade. So, Pat, you and I love talking about semiconductors and chips. We talk about ARM a lot. We talk about the ecosystem a lot. We'll, we'll be hearing more about Intel from us very soon, and we've talked about it a lot. But ARM is a big and important player here. And basically it's because ARM is adding new layers of uh, capabilities and uh, new layers of competition in the marketplace, offering its intellectual property, its instruction. ARM doesn't build the chips. People use ARM's instruction sets and build the chips. So when you've heard about uh, AWS Graviton and AWS Inferentia, these are built on ARM instruction sets. A lot of things um, you know, when you hear about Qualcomm's chips, Qualcomm partners with ARM. When you hear about a lot of things going on in IoT and Edge, ARM technologies are being used. ARM is a massive juggernaut in the mobile space right now. But where, where ARM is only really just starting to get foot in the door is where players like Intel and AMD have long been extremely uh, strong. Uh, x86, uh, obviously, is their technology. Well, ARM is starting to build their own. So you're starting to hear about ARM-based variants of, say, CPUs um, for data center and ARM-based variants of CPU notebooks. Surface, for instance, came out with an ARM-based version last uh, over the last couple of years. Lenovo has been doing this as well. Um, Samsung has been playing in this space. And then in the data center, like I mentioned, you're hearing of variants coming from AWS, but Alibaba has been going down this road. We recently heard news about Microsoft building some homegrown chips. Well, this is all ARM. And by the way, ARM is in the middle of likely being acquired by a little company that does GPUs known as NVIDIA. Well, Jensen Huang has been anything but secretive about the fact that he sees CPU, server, and, and, and notebooks as a big opportunity, as an area where that company has not really played. Uh, where right now, 80% of the notebooks are Intel, 90% um, uh, of the server are Intel, and then AMD has most of the rest um, in those categories. Well, if combined, these two companies can work together with these new instruction sets that are built to be more secure for these particular applications that I mentioned. They're designed to be uh, better with uh, specific workloads like AI and ML, yeah. which are very important right now. And you're hearing that from all the, the chip makers um, for both data center and on device. Um, ARM is building its instruction sets to be more friendly for those particular kinds of applications, which is going to draw in those OEMs that have been using ARM maybe on a very limited basis. Maybe they have one or two SKUs. Well, they're trying to attract more SKUs. They're trying to attract more SKUs for the homegrown data center enterprise a6 that are being built for you know by the big hyperscalers. They're also trying to get more attention from the uh, manufacturers that are making notebooks that are making uh, computers. Um, so this V8 to V9 transition seems to have a lot of focus on that. Now there's a lot of technical here, Pat, but the um, and I'm I'm not going to get too deep. We don't even have enough time to get too deep. But let's just say, according to everything I've read, the new blueprints are looking at something around 30% performance increases um, that they're going to be able to deliver in their next two generations of processors for both mobile and data center servers. So they're going to improve their current core business, but they're also going to plan to improve that data center sector, which is a big opportunity. And it's something that, uh, like I said, the NVIDIA ARM acquisition, if it gets approved and goes through, is very excited about the uh, potential around. Yeah, it's good. Good analysis, Daniel. And I think the only thing I'll add, add to that is just to reinforce that um, an ISA means that everything that ARM ARM's partners have the ability, the actual instruction set from the start uh, supports it. I like their I like their focus on security. And, you know, if, if the big aha in V8 was 64-bit, um, I would say that the biggest thing in V9 is security and the confidential computing element of it, which is zero trust, meaning we trust nothing that comes in and it has to have a key to let you, uh, to, to let you in. 
the one thing that would have been nice to get out at the beginning was this uh, idea of realms, uh, which makes it even more secure. That will come in uh, a little bit later a after the introduction, but I just thought those were uh, pretty cool. And I, I, I haven't I haven't read about that, Pat. Is realms kind of like enclaves? Is it, is it like the idea that you can kind of have? Uh, nope. it, it, it is it is very similar to that. You can okay. separate the level of granularity that you can separate uh, is is even further. But you can um, kind of put that data that's for, you know, for instance, high compliance regulatory data in its own little realm, separate from all the other data that you want applications to access or the amount of hardening. It's in spirit, of it's similar to what IBM is already doing. Awesome. Uh, and and I got to tell you, it's been hard to compare. There are even things that AMD uh, did in third gen. Uh, with SCV and SCM that there were, I, I, to, you know, I, I'm still doing the compare and contrast uh, right now, now, Daniel. I won't, I won't um, ask any more hard questions, sir. No, it's good. And, and the, the final thing I'm going to say is, is um, instruction set doesn't connote performance. Okay. You have to do something with it and you have to have the right design. Uh, and there's nothing uh, in the, the new V9 like I can't count machine learning in there and say, oh, I'll give you credit for performance because, uh, you know, you're, you're going to lay transistors in there. You actually have to design for performance. And I think Apple has shown and I think AWS has shown is that the ARM instruction set, even V8, you can uh, you can make performant. So I just had to throw that in there. I'm, I'm oh, sometimes sorry. explaining oh, it's the wrong instruction set. Uh, you know, uh, the x86 instruction set is more powerful, right? It's like, well, it's actually, that's not the case. It's actually uh, about the design. Well, and, and it's a lot about the partnerships. There's a reason that the people that are leveraging these, Pat, are companies with extreme resource capabilities yeah. and understandings of the workloads they're trying to build, right? They're partnering with ARM. They're, they're licensees and they're accessing the IP. It's like how device makers access IP from Qualcomm to build devices, for instance. These are the for instances here. It's not like you and I can yeah. be like, oh, we want a chip. We're gonna license it and we're gonna throw it in a laptop and you and I are gonna start building computers on ARM. It is a partnership that requires technical competency deep within the organization, not just the ARM instruction set. Oh yeah, and I'll tell you, Daniel, a new, a new ground up uh, CPU uh, used to at AMD was about a billion dollars. In, uh, in in investment, so it's oh, nothing. I got here. Nothing that's uh, nothing that's uh, a light there. 